Hi, everyone. Welcome to All Things Grants and Residencies. I'm going to walk through everything from the search to developing your ideas to the submit. I'm Lisa Kramer. I'm RISD's Grants and Residency Manager. A little about me, I really like cats. I also really like art, but I'm not a trained artist. You are surrounded by talented artists, so you don't need me for that. What I have is a lot of grant writing experience and can offer another voice. I'm here to help you with all aspects of grant applications, no matter your discipline or project idea. I will help you with your proposals and applications in a different way, which can be particularly helpful if you are applying for grants in which you have to make your case to a variety of audiences, to a non-art specific audience. In addition, there's an entire team at RISD Careers to help with both students and alumni. We are happy to help meet with you through individual or drop-in appointments about grants, residencies, internships, or jobs. So what is a grant? The definition is quite simple, agree to give or allow. A grant can be called a grant, scholarship, fellowship, an award. Sometimes these words are used interchangeably, but usually, a grant is funding for a specific project that supports the funder's mission and interest. A scholarship is usually an award for past work to continue academic-based work. A fellowship usually has some sort of service commitment, such as teaching or an internship. An award can be any of these. Don't let the word grant scare you. It really is an umbrella word for opportunity, and it's really not that complicated. It's about finding a good match for like interest. The organization, the grantor, has interest, the mission, and the money. They seek out people, grantees, with the skills and experience to help promote, enhance, and engage in their mission. Sometimes well, you will see this called an RFP, which just means request for proposal. You, the grantee, make the case for why you and why your project in some sort of application. They decide who and what they want to support, the award. You, the grantee, fulfill the grant purpose and document the activities and results. A grant is an opportunity for focused time, studio space, and project funding to work, study, explore, research, implement an idea, travel, or network for undergraduates and graduate students from emerging to establish artists. Of the 400 grants I've written, each one was very different. Some took a day, some a few weeks, some a couple of months. Each funder has unique interests, eligibility requirements, and processes. But developing a proposal has a number of steps in common. Search, research, plan, develop, write, submit, wait, and learn. Let's start with the search. The best place to start is with the RISD Careers website. You'll find all things grants and residencies here. I'm not going to review everything in detail, but I will touch on a few of the highlights to get you started. Always start closest to home. So let's first look at the RISD Careers Managed Grant page. These managed grants are RISD grants that RISD Careers has some connection to. The funding might come from RISD or is matched by RISD. RISD might nominate candidates, or RISD provides support through the application process. I'm going to run through them quickly to give you a sense of what's out there. Know that detailed information on each one of these awards is found on the RISD Careers Managed Grant page. First, the RISD Maharam Fellowship, $5,000 for an unpaid summer internship addressing social progress or safeguarding the environment, or both, in an organization where artists and designs are not usually found, or where you can contribute to the mission in a meaningful way. The Turner Fund is also an exciting $5,000 grant for a summer internship in the performing arts. RISD Careers also offers smaller grant opportunities to support internships. $1,000 to $3,000 grants for enrolled students that support internships that are unpaid, low paid, or present financial challenges. RISD Careers partners with residencies to combine funding to offer opportunities for time and space for your work at Anderson Ranch in Colorado. Monson Arts in Maine, Skohegan in Maine, the Fine Arts Work Center in Provincetown. We also manage the Wingate Lamar Fellowship, an incredible, felt flexible opportunity for seniors and fifth year students who work in craft, $15,000. Keep in mind, the grants I've mentioned are grants managed by RISD Careers. There are other grants and awards offered by other departments at RISD. We have included a few of these at the bottom of our managed grant page. Do stay on top of what's going on in your department and on campus. Then there is Fulbright, my favorite managed grant. However, I won't go into detail as this is a presentation of its own. So just a little bit about Fulbright. Fulbright is pri primarily a cross-cultural engagement opportunity for fully funded nine to 12 months independent study research project. In 140 plus countries, 
you design your own projects and develop host country affiliations. It is a complicated grant with lots of moving parts. Know that you can apply through RISD up to three years after graduation. RISD students and alumni do well in this competition. There have been 111 RISD awardees to 45 countries. On the RISD Fulbright webpage, you will find two important documents to help you through the process. RISD's checklists and deadlines and RISD's getting started. We also offer a RISD Fulbright info session in late February, early March. Keep in mind, if you're applying through RISD, you have to meet our internal deadline. This is an intense process. We are here to help, but we have to keep all our applicants on track. We often say that once you apply for a Fulbright, other grants are easy. Also, when looking for inspiration, go to our RISD Fulbright alumni website. You will find project summaries, stories, and photos to get you motivated. Moving on beyond RISD, there are numerous grant resources with search databases, which is great, but it can be overwhelming. They tend to serve you best when you have that project in mind or know what you need. Consider some keywords and then jump in, start poking around and see where the search takes you. Enter something specific and see what you get, then narrow or broaden your search. These are some of the best search sites for artists and designers. New York Foundation for the Arts, Creative Capital, Hyperallergic Foundation Center Grants for Individuals, and State and Regional Arts Agencies. These agencies will likely require that you are resident for a certain number of years in the state. You may be in transition now, but wherever you end up, remember to check and see what is going on in your state. RISD Careers has our own searchable database of opportunities. These are opportunities that our staff and peer advisors have found to be of particular interest to RISD students and alumni. For example, if you search on public art, you will get 21 hits, which you can narrow with additional keywords, review the basic description, and then move on to the funder's website. These databases and lists are all great, but there's no magic potion. You have to make the search your own. Your grant and residency search is unique to you. So in your search, in addition to these online resources, get creative. Ask your professors, where have they found funding for projects? Where have their students? Faculty are often the best sources of discipline-specific grants. Ask your classmates, peers, other artists and designers, what have they found? What actually worked for them? Hearing from others like you will make it real and show you it is possible. Find and review the resumes of artists you are interested in and admire. Search their website, find their resume, and see what awards they have received. Build a library of opportunities for now and later. Once this is on your mind, you will start hearing about opportunities, and there will be some you aren't eligible for right now, and some you'll find you just missed the deadline. Keep track of the ones you want to research, the ones you want to maybe apply for now, the ones for next year, and the ones you don't want to forget about in the future when you are ready. For example, this is a simple Excel spreadsheet. You could have tabs for time now, after graduation, 10 years from now, and or you could have tabs by type of grant or residency. Note that I'm not organizing by due date, but rather when I want to start working on the grant. If the grant is due in October, starting in October isn't likely going to help you. Factor in plenty of lead time. This slide is specifically for international students. You know more than anyone how challenging it is to find funding for education or projects outside your home country. It is true that most funders in the U.S. focus on U.S. citizens, but not all, and especially residencies, are open to international students. Do search around and ask. Ask the financial aid office at any school you're going to or planning to go to. Ask your college departments, like the Career Center, and know that grants RISD funds are open to international students. Ask organizations you and your family members are connected to. Search the online databases like the Foundation Center. Google search on grants for international students and you'll get lists of ideas. And if the citizenship eligibility is not clear, don't hesitate to email and ask. Find that out right away. On to residencies. Residencies, like grants, are also individually unique. They could be for an enrolled student, emerging artist, or a mid-career artist. They could be totally open for you to work. They could come with a work component, or they could be theme-based, asking you to explore a specific issue. They can be found all over the world, on islands, in the mountains, on farms, and on ships. Most are merit-based and offer grants to pay residency fees or some sort of work exchange. Some may even provide a stipend for supplies. Start your search here, again, at the RISD Careers website under Artist Resources. You will find all things residencies here, including our top search site. The Artist Communities Alliance, the ACA, is by far the best way to start, as this is an association of residencies who have met certain standards. Go to the directory, then the residency search. Here you can enter your criteria and start your search. 
you likely know the biggies, the Whitney in New York, Pinland in North Carolina, but here you might find some of the smaller, lesser known, super interesting residencies, such as this residency in Astoria, New York. This is the first LGBTQ plus residency in the world. This one is in the Living Room Museum, a secondhand store in North Carolina. The Corning Museum has five different residencies, one of which is a BIPOC residency, another focuses on research. This one is right in our backyard, a one month residency at the Newport Art Museum. There are residencies in our national parks from Hawaii to the Grand Canyon, where you might work alongside staff and advance your practice while being immersed in amazing nature. And there are international opportunities. Here's one in a museum in Ghana. Here's one in an old high school in Japan. And here's a theme-based residency in Finland. Keep in mind that international residencies can be expensive, especially considering you will most likely have to pay for airfare too. Do ask about financial support if it is not easily found on their website. Sometimes they may have support, but just not advertise it. If you haven't, be sure to sign up to receive the ACA newsletter. You'll receive notice of opportunities and links to residency news, articles, and advice. Also, on the same resource page, I want to point out a very helpful worksheet. Go to funding, fees, and fellowships. In addition to helpful funding tips that you'll find on this page, you will find an Excel worksheet that walks you through developing a residency budget, which you can download and make your own. It will help you think through your financial needs, not only for a residency, but also maybe for a project grant or even setting up a studio. Lastly, on residencies, you will find more helpful application advice on the RISD Careers Artist Resources page. Do consider that grants and residencies have deadlines and are often on annual cycles. If you need project money quickly, consider crowdsource funding. On the RISD Careers crowdsource funding page, you will find advice to help you consider the options and build your campaign. Each crowdsourced funding platform has their own unique angle, parameters, process, interests, restrictions, and potential audience. RISD has a Kickstarter page with over 7 million in funded projects. If you go this route, be sure to contact RISD Careers to get connected to this page. Poke around to see what kinds of campaigns have been supported. You might be surprised. Projects, games, products, even residencies are possible. For Kickstarter, the focus needs to be on what you intend to make. So for a residency, here is one in which the residency will provide an opportunity to create a new jewelry line. The second step is research. Once you find an opportunity, research it carefully. The application could be quite simple. It could be six images of your work in a brief artist statement. Or the application could be quite complicated with many application pieces and narrative like Fulbright or really any government grant. I'm going to use the RISD Meharam Fellowship as an example, which again is found on a RISD Managed Grants webpage. First, know the deadline, the date, the time, and the time zone. This is usually a hard deadline without exception. Most grants are on annual cycles. If you miss the deadline, make note for next year. And keep checking. Things change from year to year, opportunities, and due dates. Review the eligibility requirements. Most guidelines will be quite specific. Is it for enrolled students or alumni? Is it discipline specific? Do you have to live in a certain state or city? Does the project have to benefit, benefit a certain community? If you find you're not eligible now, make note of the grant for the future. Understand the grantor's interests. Pull up key phrases from the guidelines. For Maharam, those might be working with non-artists and designers with different perspectives, stretching beyond one's current skills, exploration and problem solving rather than specific set of tasks arranged by the organization. Write those at the top of your working document. Consider and address these points as you go on developing your proposal. Know your audience. What is important to them? Who do they want to benefit? And who will be reviewing your application? Whether it's artists or community members will make a big difference. Learn from past grant recipients. Find out who they are. What was their background? What were their projects? Usually you can find information on past grantees on the organization website. You may even be able to reach out to them for advice. We find that past grantees are often grateful for the opportunity they received and happy to talk with applicants. Understand all the application components well in advance. Let's look in detail at the possible application components. The application form. I mention this first because this often is, but should not be last minute. Know what the fields are, know what you'll need, don't let the easy stuff trip you up at the end. Narrative. Usually there is some sort of narrative. It could be a proposal, artist statement, personal statement, or essays. It could have few limitations or have very specific questions. And check the space limits. It makes a big difference if it's counted by words or by characters. 
timeline. If they request a timeline, it most likely does not have to be specific day to day or even week by week, but rather in the first months or in the first quarter of the grant. This is where you can prove that your project is feasible. This is where the reader can see how your project could happen. Be as detailed as reasonably possible, but you also want to show you are not too rigid. Find a balance between showing a plan, yet also openness and flexibility. Recommendation letters. Reach out to recommenders early and give them a timeline. Provide a summary of the opportunity and of your proposal. Maybe even give them a template to work with. Consider who will provide the most meaningful support and make the right connections. And consider who will be timely. A RISD Fulbright applicant worked for months on their application. They submitted on time. Their third recommender did not. They were not considered for Fulbright as their application was not complete by the due date. Also, don't forget to thank your recommenders and update them along the way. Resume. You may have this all ready to go, but you might need help to tailor the grant to, to the specific grant or to the specific project. Know that RISD Careers has advisors who can help with resumes. Transcripts. Find out what the process is to receive your transcripts early, as it could take a week or even more. And check if they are asking for unofficial or official transcripts. Unofficial transcripts can pass through your hands and be uploaded by you. Official transcripts must be sent by the school to the organization directly. Know that scanning and adjusting process may take longer than you think due to watermarks and security on the transcript file. Also, once uploaded, your transcript should be neat and legible. You are a visual artist. Visual materials. This may be the most important piece of the application, but it is the end of my list because this is what RISD students do well. So just a few quick tips. Follow the instructions. How many, size, resolution, minutes. Make your case with effective high quality images. Consider every image counts. Every image should tell a story that supports your purpose and path. You can have some detail shots, maybe an installation shot, but no throwaways. And use collaged images sparingly. There can be a couple of collaged images where it makes sense, but too many is overwhelming and diminishes the look and feel as a whole of a whole piece as a single image. There really needs to be a reason for more than one view in an image. Otherwise, it seems like sneaking in additional pieces to gain an advantage. Make the connection to your grant project through your images. Your gallery-ready portfolio may not be the same as your project portfolio. Focus on the fit to your project. Check to see if you can submit image descriptions. Use this space. Not only title, size, and materials, tell us more. This is your chance to write more about your work. Take advantage of this space. Curate the order thoughtfully for a cohesive portfolio feel. A curated portfolio shows organized thinking and thoughtfulness. It shows you care about this opportunity. Be sure to start strong to capture their attention and make sure they want to see more. Be sure to end strong as that last image will stay on their mind as they move to other parts of your application. And in a group review, that last image may stay up on the screen as they talk about your application. You want that image to be strong and connected to what you are proposing. A final tip, print each image you are considering on half sheets of paper and take them to a wall. Stand back and really look at them and then move them around to find that compelling flow. In developing a budget, ask for what you need, not more or less. Reviewers are often experts and they will know if it is over or under. They also wanna know, in a sense, that they are getting the most bang for their buck, but also that it is adequate because they want you to be successful. Here's the template that I made up. If you can choose the format, show your budget in a neat Excel spreadsheet or a table. Show that you are professional. Show off your visual skills and ways of thinking. Show detailed descriptions where possible. Make sure the amounts add up and make sure it matches the grant amount. Think of an application and the many components like a puzzle. There are many pieces that have to come together in just the right way at just the right time. Thoughtful organization is an important part of the grant writing process. I love this photo. This is a photo of RISD architecture alum Ming Wong's workspace as she was developing a grant for a project in Denmark and Greenland. It highlights the importance of clever organization of all the puzzle pieces. Which brings us to plan. Dedicate time to the process. Set internal deadlines that are earlier than the funders so you have no problem meeting their deadline. Factor in time for support documents that are not in your control like recommendation letters, offer letters, and transcripts. Build an archive of responses. Starting with a blank page can be overwhelming. Develop a way to keep track of your applications and essays so you can find and reuse material you have developed. Again, a simple Excel spreadsheet. Here I've listed the grants I've applied to along with keywords that I can then search on. So if a grant comes up where I want to highlight my language skills, I can search on keywords, find the grant application I submitted in which I address my language skills, 
then go to the application document that I've saved, copy, paste, and revise as needed for the new grant I'm applying for. Moving on to develop. Grants are primarily about your are primarily about your exploration. And there's so many things you want to explore, right? Excellent. Be open. Think big. But then you are going to have to narrow and focus. Think less is more, especially considering the limited space you have to do it justice. To stand out in a competitive applicant pool to reviewers who are very busy, you will need to keep focused on a single topic. It is better to explore one idea and explain it effectively rather than introduce many ideas poorly. What are the three things you want reviewers to remember? Three. That's it. Study shows that humans really only remember three things. I know even from this presentation, you likely only take away three things. Write those three things you really want to stand out in your application at the top of your working document. And make sure they jump out. Make your activities and goals feasible. Consider your timeline and your funding carefully. Even if you think or even know it is possible, you don't want your reviewers to feel overwhelmed and question your ambition. A lot of activities, locations, players involved, or goals may not sound feasible. Make a case for why the specific grant or residency. Of course, everyone knows you're applying for different things. You don't put all your eggs in one basket, but you want your reviewers to feel like this is the perfect fit. If this could be any grant or residency or location or applicant, it is not so interesting. Make your unique case. All this may seem confining and com com uncomfortable. There's so much you wanna do and say, but know that your experience will be broader, deeper, and go in directions you didn't expect. How do you do this? How do you focus and formulate your ideas into a written proposal? It will happen through a process and with time. By tailoring to the grantor's mission, interest, and guidelines, through your project research, by working with a professor, a mentor, a grant recipient peer, a RISD career advisor, or the RISD Center for Arts and Language, and through lots of writing and brainstorming. In developing your project and proposal, you will need to hit what I call the W's plus. Who, what, where, why, when, and the pluses, how, how do you know, so what? We have a resource to help you through this process. If you go back to the RISD Careers website under Grants and Awards, at the bottom, you'll find a link to Proposal Development Considerations. This document may help you think through your answers to the W plus question. It is, in a sense, a way to interview yourself. You can use these prompts as headers in your draft to help you focus and then delete later. I'm not gonna review each prompt. You can review this on your own as you consider your unique projects and interests, but I'll hit on a few key points. What is your learning objective? Clearly articulate what is it you want to learn and how will you learn it through this opportunity? What is the context? Don't assume they know. Explain the process or materials or history, especially if the reviewers are not artists. For example, if your proposal is about Mongolian gears, a textile dwelling, you first have to explain what it is, maybe provide some history, its current role and the pros and cons, and likely you'll need to do this in a very short space, which is one reason why focusing on one thing that you can explain well is so important. Who cares? What makes this relevant? Why is this important to you, funder, the community? For example, if you are interested in Italian puppets, great, but how do you get others on board? How do you speak to what is important to the grantor? Perhaps by talking about why this traditional art form should continue to exist, and may actually have an even more important role in our technology-focused world. What is the connection? Why is it a good fit for their mission? Refer back to their wording, make the connections for them. Don't make them guess or read between the lines. Why you? Show your path, demonstrate that you've done your research and you are prepared, that you have skills and experience to do this, but also show that there's room to grow and learn. If you are already there and you know everything, then why fund you? Show how this grant will move you forward. What is the impact? This is the, so what? What difference will this grant make to you, the organization, community? Usually they want to understand the impact in the short term. You could include intentions or contributions for the long term. Just be careful not to sound too grant. You might find that most of your questions about applying for a grant are answered with, it depends. That's because your proposal is unique to you, your ideas, your project, your art and design, and all of those involved. Now for many, the scariest step writing. Applying will usually involve some writing. It might be one 250 word essay. It might be 15 250 word essays, or it could be a complicated project which you have to describe in only two pages and every word counts. For the most part, grant writing is not so much about being creative. It's about being straightforward and authentic. Here are some basic writing tips. Concise, yet compelling and with passion. 
professional. Get in your own voice. Ranchers are not interested in overly edited writing. They want to hear from you. Get there faster. Don't wait until the end to tell us your goals. Those first two to three paragraphs are the most important. Show, don't tell. Instead of writing, I'm a leader, I was president of X club. Tell us how you led, provide an example. Be accurate in spelling, grammar, and facts. Pay attention to the required formatting. You want a neat application package from beginning to end. You never want to annoy your reviewers with little things like typos or incorrect formatting. Clear and jargon-free. Know your audience. Don't use RISD lingo and even be careful of discipline lingo. Again, consider that the reviewers may not be artists or designers. Consider this statement. I will analyze the vernacular of built environment and corresponding visual hierarchies by investigating urban junctures, material patterns, and contextual holes comparing evolving typologies in order to identify infrastructural outcomes and develop responses to architectural vacancies that could affect the manifestation of spatial relationships and dynamics and social practices and interactions while adapting for contemporary and historical perspectives. Huh. I actually wrote this just to make a point, but do consider what you write may make sense to you, maybe even to the RISD world, but it might not make sense to the outside world. You have to be more specific and you can't rely on disciplined lingo to make your point. Here is a focused, specific statement of purpose summary from a successful RISD Fulbright applicant. To get there, I suggest write out a simple overview statement, the W, at the top of your document and refer back to it. Consider every sentence counts. Why are you telling us this? Does it support your overview statement? Ask someone to read your work and then tell you what they think you are proposing. Does it match? Check your ending for important statements that should be at the beginning. This speaks to get there faster. Remember, you can't proof, proofread your own work very well. At least others, ideally more than one, and ideally inside and outside your discipline. Word of warning though, try to get feedback early on in your process. Getting additional feedback at the end could throw you off. At the beginning, talk to lots of people and consider everyone's advice, but then, Make it your own. This is your proposal, your voice. Don't forget RISD Center for Arts and Language, an excellent resource for brainstorming or fine tuning your proposal. And then it is time to submit. Set time aside for this process. Don't be rushed. Print and proof a hard copy with a red pen. It's always a good idea to print and review. Look at your work in a different way. Off a computer, it's the best way to catch errors. Have all documents ready. Do not submit on the due date. Seriously, so many things can go wrong at the last minute. Granters are dealing with way more applications than they can award. For example, Fulbright receives 10,000 plus applications for 2,000 awards. They will not make exceptions. Many granters will actually warn you in the application to not submit on their due date and that they are not responsible for de technical difficulties. So set an internal deadline to submit and stick to it. And then you wait. The wait can be fairly short or a really long time. Most take one to three months. The Fulbright wait is about seven months. It is a test of patience. In the meantime, move on and apply for other things. Whether you receive the award or not, you will learn a great deal. Grant development is a character and skill building experience. You will learn from the process. You will learn from your mistakes, which you will make. I've made all of them. You will learn about yourself and more about what you wanna do or what you don't wanna do, equally important. And you will learn about other opportunities. The grant writing process itself may encourage you to leap to a lily pad you hadn't considered. Sometimes alumni come back to us and tell us, you know, I didn't get that grant, but because of the work I did on that application, I applied and received this other grant, this job, or made this new connection. Life is more like a pond of lily pads than it is a path. One jump leads to the other in various directions. It will not be a waste of time. A few final things to keep in mind. There is a lot of competition and only so many awards, but why not you? This is not free money. You do have to work for it. There are no special tricks or easy way. Work through, not around. There are no have tos. This is not homework. This is something you want to do. Try, try again. Most grantors encourage you to reapply. And if they remember you, they will appreciate your motivation and commitment. Grant writing is a process. Be patient and ask for help, especially if you haven't done this before or if it's a complicated grant. You can learn more by meeting with a RISD careers advisor, watching for opportunities in the RISD careers e-news, and attending RISD careers presentations like this one. Thank you, everyone. Do reach out for us. Do reach out to us for support. We are here and we are happy to help.